Right, welcome back now to our morning conversation. Definitely, we are done looking at what's making headlines. And of course, now we want to look at our morning discussion. Remember, this is how we do it every single morning right here on Dawn Break, Monday to Friday. After we are done at looking at what's making headlines in the papers, then we find a topic that is of relevance to you and uh, try and uh, get some bit of experts to have uh, us share some bit of uh, uh, digging deeper into those matters and those discussions. And today we want to look at um, a matter that has been there, education matter, so to speak, about uh, we are told that currently the government, through the Ministry of Education, is thinking to have the return of corporal punishment in our schools. This is after um, close to how many years in counting now? 21 since 2001, with uh, it was when it was banned. But now there is a calls to have it be returned to schools. Is it even of necessi uh, necessity to have it been returned currently? And uh, how then can it be imposed? Those are some of the questions that I'll be trying to find answers for you together with uh, my guest, Mr. Baraza here, quite often who is uh, quite often right here on Tawala TV to try and uh, have a discussion and dig deeper into that matter. Good morning, Molim. Yes, morning. Good to see you. Thank you. Right. Um, looking at uh, the situation that we have currently in our schools, before even coming, coming back to look at uh, the corporal punishment issue, mm -hmm. we have some bit of um, a situation in our schools. Looking at the increased number of arson attacks and the cases that we are having in our schools, mm -hmm. uh, paints some bit of a different picture. We've had um, uh, students stabbing uh, teachers here and there. In discipline cases have increased so far. What would you say is the reason as to why all this is happening currently? I think uh, all these things are happening in mm. schools right. simply because we had some a break. Right. And this break was a little bit quite long. Mm -hmm. So taking these kids back to school and recuperating back their mind to what they're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. it requires time. Mm -hmm. So these are the things most of the schools anticipated they are going to happen in schools. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of looking at the kids, looking at the students and do what is good for them. Right. Yeah. But of course then, um, so in, in a nutshell you're saying the longer the break we had is uh, the cause of what this problem that Ex we're currently facing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because you find some of these kids, they had already started to do the, their work. Right. So if you bring them to school, contain them like you're going to be here for certain and ABCD hours, mm -hmm. for them maybe they're looking for something to do outside, obviously they have to resist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Then the problem will start from there. The problem starts from there. Yeah. And of course, um, what then do you think needs to be done? On the issue of discipline, discipline is a collective bargain mm -hmm. from the parents, students themselves, and the teachers at school. Right. So if you're going to have a collective bargain as a body, then at the end of the day, everything is going to be contained. Right. Yeah. Definitely at the end of the day, everything else is going to be contained. Those are some of the words of my guest that is an actual. But remember, we'd like to engage you into our discussion. As usual, there's that number below your screen. What do you think about the return of corporal punishment in our schools? Share your comments via the social media platform as well. It's Facebook, Tawala Facebook. Like the page, then drop your comment as we proceed. I'll be trying and looking into some of your comments. But coming back, Molimu, to the corporal punishment issue now. It's 21 years since when it was banned way back in 2001. Exactly. But um, most of us, maybe we don't understand. You haven't been into this field of uh, teaching for quite uh, long what would you say was some of the reasons that prompted the government then to ban uh, corporal punishment in our schools? I think um, it was a cry mm -hmm. from the international laws of the schools when they say it's a little bit dehumanizing mm -hmm. the students. Right. It brings that torture, physical torture to the students. You see, psychological. This th I think they said this has to come to, to, to a stop. Mm -hmm. Because you find if you are killing somebody and inflicting pain to this person, right. so at the end of the day, somebody have inflicted pain too, again, you want to go and teach the same person. Mm -hmm. So you find that stigma start to be there. And some of these kids we are teaching right now, some of them are above 18 years, right. you see. So this is an adult. So you are putting an adult down, you are killing an adult. Mm -hmm. So we need to have a more talk than a more caning. Right. Yeah. The question of beds. Should we return corporal punishment in our school? I don't think to be a good idea. I don't think because corporal punishment, this one is a, an, you associate 
a problem mm -hmm. with a pain. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if you have a problem, is going to be associated with a pain. Mm -hmm. That's why corporal punishment comes into existence. If you do this, you are shit with this one mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. You see? So if a kid is going to misbehave, right. then at the end of the day, what is required is the pain. Right. That's why corporal punishment was injected in, in schools. Mm -hmm. But, Shadrach, uh, what I can say, if you want to create a bad society tomorrow, then you introduce again corporal punishment mm -hmm. in the society. Right. Because we have this issue of gender violence. You see, if you're going to be brought up knowing that maybe at the end of the day, if somebody does a mistake, then what associated with a mistake is a pain. Mm -hmm. We are going to lose the society. Right. Yeah. But of course, uh, looking into the Bible, I, was, uh, I, I met a teacher and they quoted, they quoted some bit of a verse saying, spare the road, spoil the child, you know. What, uh, what we need, sometimes we say, when we stop talking, mm -hmm. we are going to start fighting. Right. So we need to continue talking more than we are going to do what? To fight. Mm -hmm. So what is required in school is more of the talking than more of the caning. Right. Yeah. But to some extent, we have, you see, in school we have uh, different, we have different caliber. Mm -hmm. Not everybody requires a cane. Mm -hmm. We have some other issues that will require just a talk. Right. Then if it escalates to a higher level, then we can think out as a body on what can be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So um, somebody will question, is Mwalimu arguing from a, a teacher point of view or a parent point of view? I think a teacher is a parent. Mm -hmm. You cannot be a teacher if you're not a parent. Because most teachers, when it comes to caning, they will tell you it's the best way so far to instill discipline. Caning instills dis caning instills fear. Uh -huh. It's not discipline. Right. It instills fear in the students because at the end of the day, somebody knows if I do this, this is the repercussion. Mm -hmm. This is the effect of this one. So it instills fear. You may be teaching people you think they're respecting you, but they're fearing you. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you, you, the ones who came about with this um, proposal was uh, the CS himself. I had him speak about that matter. And he stated, he stated that uh, it's high time that we should bring the corporal punishment in our schools. And even he gave out uh, in the expounded uh, father saying that uh, the, uh, the boy child should be caned at the back, then the girl child should be caned at their hands. You see, maybe to at the level at which this talk has come into now, mm. it clearly shows that uh, it's a done deal. The corporal punishment is on the way coming. It can be on the way coming, but uh, a punishment in terms of caning, mm -hmm. I think is not a good idea. Right. It is not. Mm -hmm. Because uh, at the end of the day, we have some teachers, you may be in the name of you are punishing or you are caning. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you never know the eventuality that comes out with the caning. Right. Sometimes the intention can be good, mm -hmm. but the outcome is bad. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are caning a girl on the hand, sour sour. Right. All of a sudden, maybe you want to cane the upper part of the hand. Mm -hmm. This girl turns the hand the other side. in the course. Mm -hmm. Then you are going to cane on this other and these upper bones here. Right. At the end of the day, you'll find the hand is swelling. Mm -hmm. Then at the end of the day, this can be a court case. True. Yeah. Right. Of course. Now the question now is, if at all we want to bring back the corporal punishment, mm -hmm. how do you feel? How do you think? it needs to be enforced. I think uh, if it's going to come back, it has to be highly regulated, mm -hmm. especially by the principals. Because even CS said, the teachers and the principals of the schools are supposed to be responsible for mm -hmm. anything that's going in the school. Right. So if the corporal punishment can be brought back in our schools, then the best thing that can be done in our schools, I think it's highly to be regulated. Mm -hmm. And this is high to be monitored by the principals. Because some of the teachers, we have teachers who are short-tempered, we have those who are high-tempered, we have those who are who asira, ninyingi. Mm -hmm. So in the course of caning a kid, injury can just come at a very high cost. Right. Yeah. But then, um, looking at uh, 2001 when it was uh, banned, mm -hmm. and uh, looking into 2021 where we want to see reintroduce the corporal punishment, mm -hmm. somebody will say that maybe the government uh, rushes on making decisions that maybe to some um, when you see it from a different angle will come and haunt us a few years back a few years later so to speak yeah i think uh, good leadership you don't wait for the crisis 
you don't wait for the crisis. Mm -hmm. So if you look at uh, what the CS is doing, is trying to look at the burning of schools, right. then you introduce the caning. Mm -hmm. Burning of schools is very different from caning. Mm -hmm. You see, what instigates a kid to go and burn a school, caning cannot do anything to such a, a behavior. Mm -hmm. You see, this is a criminal offense. It's totally criminal. So let us not be people who are proactive to the problems. Let us be people who are active to the problems. Let us try to instigate what's likely to happen in the future. Then we try to prevent as early before it happens. Mm -hmm. This issue of burning schools, it's not just happening only this year. It is something that has been there for quite, oh, yeah. quite, quite long. Mm -hmm. Almost each and every year, people are burning up schools. Mm -hmm. Each and every year, people are burning up schools. Each and every year, people burn up the schools. Mm -hmm. The question is, why? Is it because cane was removed from the schools? Mm -hmm. No. Then what should be done? Why are they burning? Now that's where the research should be done in totality. Why each and every year students go on rampage to burn the schools? Right. Yeah. Definitely quite some bit of a challenge there to the government. But then um, would you say that we've wasted this number of years that that's why we have this kind of situation currently facing our kids, cases of indiscipline. Our kids have become so rowdy simply because we don't instill discipline as much as it need, it's needed in our schools. You see, there is a lot that has to be done. Mm -hmm. Even if you just come to cost itself and where I teach, the area where I live, mm -hmm. where we live right. in the society that we are living in, you find one of the biggest problems, especially just in the coast region, are drugs. Mm -hmm. You see? You, have, you, you find that Mira is becoming a norm. True. Something just you find on the road. Mm -hmm. And nobody is lamenting. Nobody is condemning. Mm -hmm. Mogoka is becoming a norm. Nobody is lamenting and nobody is commenting. Mm -hmm. Now you find this one has entrenched in our schools. Whereby the students we are teaching, the kids that we are teaching in schools, they are using these stuffs. Right. Then if you are using these stuffs, at the end of the day, I'm telling you, Bana Shadrach, the yeah. schools are going to be bad <laughs> if we don't do something about these issues. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Though I was in a, a function, we were having uh, the, the member of parliament was speaking about the issue concerning the Miran Mugukas, mm -hmm. and they say that something also needs to be done. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. that is a conversation we should also be having. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, wrapping up on the issue about the corporal punishment, um, you've spoken about collective bargaining. Mm -hmm. uh, the parents, the teachers, and the students. But most of people will say, we as the parents, at home, we instill discipline to our kids. You see? At home, definitely, the parent will take even a muiko and hit the kid. But if at all now you teachers, you say that it's a collective responsibility, you're confusing us, you know. How is it supposed to be done there? I think um, by the time I was in school, mm -hmm. those back years right you see mm -hmm. my parent used to visit the school right oftenly mm -hmm. to know my conduct and what i'm doing in the school True. to get an update report mm -hmm. you see right. and every time you find this person comes like twice in the school mm -hmm. to take the update about about me and that's why i'm sitting here but now you find majority of the parents that we are having these are parents who can finish almost a term mm -hmm. minus visiting the school <laughs> on what the kid is doing in the school. Right. So when you are going to have this triangle mm -hmm. of a kid, we have a parent, then you have the teacher. At the end of the day, things will work out better right. in our schools mm -hmm. because the parent will know exactly what the kid is doing and the teacher knows exactly what the kid is doing. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we are going to save the society of tomorrow. Definitely. But of course, Malimu, before we look into our matters to do with the KCP and the KCC exam, mm. uh, somebody is quickly asking if at all a teacher can be um, strict enough without necessarily using a cane. How is it even possible? It is, a, it is possible. Mm -hmm. I think somebody who is asking, it is something I have been using right. where I teach. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, let the students you are teaching or the kids you are teaching to know exactly who their teacher is right. or who their teachers are. Mm -hmm. What do they need? What's their goal? And you as a teacher, you must also understand what are the goals of the kids you are teaching. Mm -hmm. So it does not mean or it does not need a cane to instill a discipline in a school or mm -hmm. for an assignment to, to be done. What's required is just the word. So let everybody understand their goal. Understand the goal of the kids and let the kids understand your goal. Right. You're going to work in a very straight mm -hmm. line without any 
problem. So you want to tell me, Molimu, that strictness does not necessarily need for you to walk around with a cane? It does not need. Mm. It does not need. Just a matter of sample to understand you. Right. Yeah, like where I teach at Elite Imperial Complex, mm -hmm. students understand me. This is Mr. Baraza, mm -hmm. and this is what Baraza needs of me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Definitely. But of course, with the kind of kids that we have currently, you know, looking at uh, the times at which we were schooling, it was much different. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, these kids don't know a lot, do a lot. In fact, you know, if you, you, you can't tell me that you walk around without a cane and expect me to just start stacking in. You see, discipline, it is something that has to be administered from the word go, go. from mm -hmm. the day one. Mm -hmm. Where I went in school, when you're reporting from one, you have to swear. Right. I am going to swear that in this school, my shirt will never harm. Uh -huh. So it is something that has to be done straight away from day one. Mm -hmm. It's going to be installed in day one, even the last day, it's going to be maintained. Definitely. Yeah. Right. Of course, there are those teachers who believe that um, me as a teacher who have been in this profession, I need to have a very long stick and whip away kids for them to do what uh, they have to do. <laughs> you see in the 2001, mm -hmm. when this was being taken away, some of the teachers by that time, mm -hmm. by that time I was still in primary. Right. So they felt that some of their, uh, maybe some of their power has mm -hmm. been a little bit reduced, mm -hmm. you see, because you remove caning and then you have been caning, you feel there's something they have removed out of you. Right. But it does not need a long cane, it just need a lot of talk. Right. Yes. Definitely a lot of talk indeed. And of course, uh, we'll wait and see how that goes. But of course, switching gears now and looking matters to do with the national exams that we mm -hmm. are supposed to be happening on, in March. After the assessment that was done by the Kenya National Examination Council in the last number of weeks ago, mm -hmm. it is clear that um, a huge majority of uh, the candidates failed to attain the minimum pass mark of 50%, and therefore the study showed that maybe to some extent they may fail when it comes to uh, the real KCP exams. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that all report first? I, I, I think uh, from the report, assessment is something which is quite good mm -hmm. because we are from COVID. Right. These kids, they have been at home. Mm -hmm. We don't know what they have been doing. Yeah, though we, we said that we had uh, some online teachings, mm -hmm. some, some of the areas they had no internet, some of the areas these kids, they never gone to somewhere to, to seek for the information. Right. So assessment, in my view and in my opinion, was something good because assessment tells you where you are mm -hmm. and where you want to go. Right. Yes, in totality, the assessment was a tick mm -hmm. to the ministry. Right. Yeah. But of course, can't we use the assessment report and the assessment results to be a base of saying maybe it's high time we should come to the reality that KCP needs to be at least be pushed uh, ahead? You know? Look at this Banashadrak. If you're going to fail in anything, mm -hmm. it gives you a morale to do better. So failing brings courage. Mm -hmm. I'm hundred percent sure even the exams we are going to do, these kids are going to pass because we have realized the mistake as teachers. This is where the mistake is. Math has a problem of ABCD. English has a problem. So we concentrate on the area of the weakness to better the result. So. I am confident that the results ahead of us mm -hmm. are going to even to be much better than those other years. With the time that is remaining, Molly, you know, it's it, much. It, 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 is, it is doable. Mm -hmm. It is doable. We have the candidates in our school and we are working around the clock to ensure everything has to go as planned right. because the timetable cannot change. Mm -hmm. Yes. Molimu, NEC comprises of uh, uh, very serious stakeholders in matters to do with education. And if at all they've come up with such, um, um, let me say, proposal, uh, such a thinking of saying uh, it's high time we should postpone the examination, don't you think they have some sense in that? I don't see the sense in it because the calendar has to run the way it was planned. All right. You see? So postponing exam, even if you say we are going to do these exams next year, I'm 100% Banashadrak. Mm -hmm. All these kids cannot get above 300 marks. Mm -hmm. They cannot. All the Form 4s will not get A's and A minuses. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we have some will have the lower grade and those ones who are going to have the upper grade. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, let the calendar run as it was planned. Right. Yeah. Let the calendar run as it was planned. But of course, um, uh, if you were to speak now to the kids, you know, yesterday I saw 
um, the CS also speaking to the kids, yeah. telling them that ignore the newspapers, ignore the news on TV and radios, you concentrate with your studies, make sure you do your best. What would you say to them? I think uh, to the kids who are watching, mm -hmm. I think failing brings another step of life. Right. It brings correction in life. Mm -hmm. So failing does not mean that your life is ending there. So if you have failed the first assessment, this one gives you a morale booster that I can do better in the coming exam. Mm -hmm. So to the kids who are watching, I'll just retreat the words of the, uh, of the CS, mm -hmm. that even the forthcoming exam, which is ahead of us, right. they are going to do much better because we have realized where the weakness is. Mm -hmm. And through those weaknesses, now we can do much better for the time which is remaining. Right. So I just ask them to read, to be focused, and to tackle the exams ahead of them. Right. We have a month to go before we sit for exam, if I'm not wrong, or some exam. weeks yeah. to go. Right. Um, you as a teacher, which is a little secret that you need to have in making sure that uh, now that you know that the assessment you had performed poorly and you're looking forward to perform better in the real exam now, what exactly do you need to do? I think uh, what is required is just to boost the morale of the students, mm -hmm. to boost the morales of these people who are in primary, so, so, uh, mm -hmm. that though we have performed poorly in this, but we have to do much better. I think frequency exams to these kids mm -hmm. will work out much better mm -hmm. if we can frequent exams right. to them mm -hmm. then to make sure that at the end of the day what they're doing we are examining what they're doing we are seeing what they're doing mm -hmm. at the end of the day it's going to work out let us just work around the clock as teachers let us ensure we give best to our kids at the end of the day i know we are going to have a good and better results right. and we all hope that once the results are out come kcpe the results are out mm -hmm. will not start blaming and say you see we told you you should uh, postpone you see you know? yeah. I think there will be no blames mm -hmm. because what I understand, like uh, when Machangi took over the, the ministry, right. we had only 12 A's in the country, mm -hmm. but it never stopped people to learn. So learning does not mean that everybody has to get an A. Right. Even if you get a D plus, you get a C minus, mm -hmm. you get a B, still you will continue to learn. That's why we have certificate, we have diploma, we have degree, we have, so it is a continuous process. Mm -hmm. So whether you get, we have some people who are professors, but they started from a certificate. Mm -hmm. We know them. We have Nyong'o. You ask Nyong'o, right. what did he get in high school? Then right now we call him a professor. Right. So he's going to tell you that learning is a continuous process. Whether you have an E, you have an A, you have a B, as long as you have that courage and morale that this is what I need, this is where I want to go, you will go to where I want. Mm -hmm. And the sky... Definitely. Right. Looking at the uh, page 8 of the standard this morning, talks about uh, uh, quite an issue here that is uh, we need to discuss a little bit. Learners to know their fate of KCP exams today as, um, uh, if at all, the proposals are to be adopted. Remember, there is this report mm -hmm. that uh, recommends learners to seek school-based assessments instead of national examinations. Uh, what do you think about that? I Should think, we do away with the KCP and KCSE examinations and have school-based assessments? I think we are changing the curriculum. True. So it is something that people must be aware of. Mm -hmm. We are on CBC. Competence? Curriculum is the one, the one we are doing, True. isn't it? Yeah. We are deviating away from this issue of KCP because the current system that we have, mm -hmm. it's only a system based on the performance. You see, if you get this, you will end up to a university. Mm -hmm. If you get this, you will end up to an ABCD place. Yeah. But now the system we are changing to, mm -hmm. it is totally based on the learners. You see, mm -hmm. so I think it's a, a better system. We will go that way. Right. Yeah. Looking at the school-based assessments, do you feel it will be over the same standard and quality as it um, over the next thing, the it, KCP and it, the it, KCC? It, it, in fact, it's going to be much better. Because I, I, may, I may give you an example. When Matiang said that now let the principals be in charge of the exams right. in the centers, mm -hmm. you saw that a cheating of exams derived from almost 90% to, to 10%. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if we leave these issues to school, teachers are going to be in a better position to administer the exam than a foreign body. Right. Yeah. Do you feel maybe it will be administered uh, as it should be? A hundred percent. It's going to be administered. Right. Yes. Definitely. Another proposal in the same uh, uh, report talks about um, that um, boarding schools should be abolished in junior secondary schools. I think uh, we must... Uh, People who propose such uh, issues, 
they forget that we are living in a changing world. These are things we can, will never, and we cannot go away with them. Mm -hmm. Boarding schools will live, will exist with us, and will be there forever. Right. Because we need these boarding schools. We have those parents who need these boarding schools. Not every parent needs a boarding school. We have those ones who need day school. We have those ones who need boarding schools. Right. So let the preference of a parent take the course. Right. So let us have this boarding, even the junior school. Right. Yeah. But people looking at the incidents that we've had mm -hmm. in discipline cases that we've quite witnessed, mm -hmm. most of them happen, happens in the boarding schools. And people will think maybe there's some bit of, uh, we need to look into this matter so seriously. Mm -hmm. There is need to have these boarding schools now turned into a day school, simply because the, the, the students may go at home, have some talks with their parents. The, the frequent communication with the parent, the frequent, you know? I think, uh, an evil mind remains an evil mind. Even if you whether go... Whether in day school or body school. <laughs> <laughs> an evil mind remains an evil mind. Right. So whether you're at home uh -huh. or at a school, mm -hmm. still the same thing can happen. Mm. The same thing will happen. Right. Yes. So what we need, because teachers who are in schools they are also parents mm -hmm. so what we need is just a triangle a format of a triangle let the parents have a constant visit and let them even if it's not physical visiting mm -hmm. but let us have even a network in a school whereby parents can acquire right now we have even groups mm -hmm. schools have groups where parents interact with even the, the teachers in schools right. why can't we create such a things platforms in schools whereby even a parent at home can know exactly what the kid is doing at school right so going away with the boarding schools does not resolve anything but it take us backward does not propel us forward definitely yeah right i guess we should leave it there but last but not least <laughs>